Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We are chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. Now, Jordan, we're going to stick to uh, the precious metals as we always do. I really want to focus on some of the charts. And instead of starting with gold, as we usually do, I want to start with silver because this is a market that I think is under a lot of pressure right now. And quite frankly, you look at where the futures contract. I'm looking at the December's future contract now below $18 and we are ending the month today. So we're going to get a monthly close at under $18 we haven't seen a monthly close under $18 since back in April of 2020, right after the COVID kind of pandemic crash that we saw. And quite frankly, you look at a longer term chart, a monthly chart, a weekly chart, it looks pretty ugly for silver. Jordan, what are you seeing in the silver chart? Is there any hope for the bulls here that silver could rebound? Or is this fall? Is this recent monthly close that we're going to get is this just showing that lower prices are coming well i think you said it there in the question Corey. this is really ugly and i think this is something we discussed last week or the week before and i want to say a month ago or so i mean it was difficult for me to write in the sense that you know i don't want to be extreme but looking at the silver chart i mean it's just it, it's put in this really ugly top since it peaked in the uh, two years ago in the summer of 2020 i mean it's it's a distribution top so it's not really i mean it kind of looks a little bit like a head and shoulders but um i mean it's not quite a head and shoulders even though it looks like it but e e either way it's just it's this ugly distribution top and so when it lost 22 it was in some trouble and so you know looking at this ugly top there's just really i mean it it's it, it, when you have this kind of an ugly top and a market breaks down, I mean, you're not going to see that just the odds of it putting in some bottom and then reversing higher is just, they're just really minimal at that point. And so I think I said last week, if you, if you, if you looked at a measured target, I mean, you're looking at, even if you took, you know, 28 minus 22, that's, um, you know, that would give you a target of 16. But looking at it now, if you're just using intraday prices, you know, silver got up to 30. So if you look at 30 minus 22, that gives you 14. If you're looking at a monthly, um, and I did I did say 14 to 15 is the next strong support last week. So if you're looking at a monthly chart, it's pretty obvious that the next strong support is around 14, $15. And that at this point, that's where it's going to, which is, you know, we're in the upper 17s now so it's not that far away i think most of the damage has already been done in the stocks but you're obviously going to see some more and i think you're you're going to see a lot more you're going you, you could see some real panic in the sector so it, it just it doesn't look good but the good news is is that it's not that far away from strong support at 14 or 15 and you're going to have really sentiment is going to get really blown out because e even a, a week ago or so you were pretty close to a net spec position of zero and i think in 2018 and 2019 well, i think in 2018 when the sector bottomed a couple months before uh, the fed shifted course at that point i think you had a net spec position that was below zero you i think you also may have had one in 2013 but if we get I mean, I, I, if the market does come down to that 14, 15 level, you're going to see a net spec position that's going to be basically negative, meaning that the speculators are going to be net short. And if that coincides with the Fed having to shift, you know, they stop hiking, um, I think that, you know, that could set up um, a very significant bottom for the sector. So obviously we're not quite there yet. I mean, it it, it looks awful. You, you, you don't want to get bullish, bullish on the market just yet. Uh, because looking awful is one thing. I mean, looking awful, but then coming down to major support, that's when you want to get really bullish. And so I'm looking at, you know, $14, $15, that area. That's really strong support. I mean, that that could be when things get really washed out. But I mean, yeah, unfortunately, it, it's going to retrace, you know, essentially, when you look at the monthly chart, all of the move after the COVID crash, which is, you know, it's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, Jordan, that is unfortunate. I, I'm personally a kind of a silver bug, and I know a lot of the people that follow along with our interviews are invested in silver companies. So just from that side of things, you know, if silver was 
to keep on diving down over 20% down to $14. That's still a pretty big move in the metal. And I would imagine that that would hit the mining stocks even harder. Do you have any levels you're watching in things like SIL or SILJ or in the silver miners as far as where you would think supports come in? Because they've already been punished pretty hard. They were already priced like silver is 14, honestly. But do you think that in a corrective move, is there any support levels you're looking for in the silver mining stocks? Well, first, I would just have a little quibble with what you're saying regarding they're already priced for $14 silver. It looks that way because the margins and the profitability is equivalent to what it was at $14 silver because costs have gone up so much uh, since the last time silver was at $14. But yeah, I mean, I haven't looked at the SIL or SILJ. I mean, taking a broader look at, at them now, you know, they could come. If you're looking at the low in 2019 in the summer, and then you're looking at the obviously the um, the COVID crash low. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at a couple of small daily charts, but for SIL, I mean, you're looking at around 20 or a dollar or two below. Um, so I would, yeah, I mean, I, I would I would say they could probably fall another 15 to 20 percent. But I would, you know. It, and if this if this starts happening, if this view of mine pans out, because you know we, I don't have a crystal ball, we can't predict the future. But in that scenario, I would look and see the silver stocks that are holding up better than the ones that are just completely falling apart. So there might be some better ones that dig in a little bit or start to dig in while the sector um, continues to trend lower. That's something that I would look at. Uh, but th yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty ugly, but that's, yeah. The, the good news is we're much closer to the end than the beginning. And I mean, it, it, it could be aligning with the Fed having to shift course and stop their hiking of rates. I mean, I know we talk about that all the time, but if they hike 75 in, uh, in September, they're going to be up to 3.25%. When you're looking at the market, um, which the terminal rate, I mean, I haven't looked at it in a day or two, but the terminal rate was around you know, 3.75%. So after the September hike, they are going to be mostly done. You know, even if you, even if you believe the Fed is going to be able to follow through, you know, and get to 3.75%, that doesn't take into account if we start seeing, you know, much worse economic news after the summer, if the stock market, uh, which went below 4,000 today. I mean, if that continues to decline towards the low, I mean, th th those will be really positive things for precious metals. I'm just saying, I'm just thinking out loud, if we see those things continue as precious metals dump lower, you know, that the dump lower could be the end because it's going to lead to the Fed, you know, ending their hikes. Jordan, when I look at this monthly chart, which goes back about 10 years, I am a little bit worried that we're seeing something similar to let's say 2013, where the market was breaking some key support and kept moving down for a number of years. And then when it did hit a bottom, in all fairness, it took four to five years to actually start moving higher. There were some trading opportunities in there, but nothing more than maybe six months. So it really seemed like a lot of the silver investors were trading amongst each other. And some people from the sidelines came on board. Do we need to be worried that we could be in a prolonged sideways move where it really is only a trader's market and it takes a while longer for a bull market, a true breakout higher to happen? I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I assume you're talking about, about silver, but you know, maybe you're also thinking about gold. I mean, after 2013, remember that came about, you had a decade long uh, pure uh, bull market in precious metals. I mean, silver had went from three or four bucks up to 50. And, you know, silver was, when it broke down, it was still pretty historically high in the upper 20s. I mean, at this point, silver's broken down at 22. Now it's it's at the same level it was, you know, essentially 14 or 15 years ago. So you just, you don't, the amount of money that's in the sector um, compared to 10 years ago, nine years ago, it's much, much, much less. And, you know, and those breakdowns in 2013, they coincided with the S&P breaking, you know, 
making a 13 year breakout, you know, a significant breakout. And that's what you see in secular bull markets for equities. You get the top in hard assets. Uh, and, you know, and then after that, you tend to get a, uh, a breakout in uh, equities and you get, you know, a new, new secular trends are born. This is, um, you know, this could be the ending of a secular bull in uh, the stock market. And so we look at when that happened. I mean, you look at when that happened in 2000 and in 1968. I mean, the silver charts were really, really ugly at that point. So, and I, you know, I, I, I think that I think that's a better comparison uh, to 2013. I think the fundamentals bear that out, you know. And again, also, you just you look at the amount of money uh, that was invested in precious metals you know, in, in 2013 versus everything else. I mean, it was huge. Now it's, it's really minuscule. And so this is more, again, I would, I would just throw out the 1968 and 2000 comparisons. This is much more like that, in my opinion, where, you know, the silver chart is really ugly. It'll probably, it could take a little time for it to bottom and eventually begin a new uptrend. But you know, in a, a year or two from now, it's going to be pretty obvious, I think, that, um, you know, we already started the next leg higher in precious metals. And that, you know, in, in that scenario, especially if the stock market makes a lower low, I mean, that that's that signals a new secular uh, bull market in precious metals. So just because, uh, you know, I'll just go back to, again, 1968 and 2000, you know, it took silver a couple of years then to get going. So that, I mean, that is... That is a fair point. I mean, it did take silver a few years to get going, you know, and even longer than gold after those two secular bottoms. So that is something to consider. Well, Jordan, just kind of as we wrap up, we've had a lot of people on the show recently that believe that the setup for the general markets still looks pretty bearish, even though we've had this bounce. Same thing for precious metals. And the general consensus is that if the general markets sell off hard in September, later in the month or October, that that would still drag the precious metals down even further and the related mining stocks. Do you have a target if 1675 was to break of where you think gold would find support? And I guess a lot of people don't think there's a possibility of it diverging. I know you think that's when the real bull market could start, but what would cause it to diverge if everything is being sucked down the drain together? Well, gold is getting hit because fundamentally if you look at you know real tips yields and that really drives the you know the gold market in the short term i mean those are rising because inflation expectations are falling and nominal rates are rising and so gold is going to start performing much better when we get a peak in bond yields you know i thought we had that a month or two ago i was wrong about that um, but that's really the key thing to watch for, you know, is a continued decline in the stock market. And at some point um, when the market really senses that recession is imminent or definite, then you'll start to see capital move into the bond market first, probably in the 10, you know, in the 10 year and then in the two year. And so that's really what we need to watch for is a peak in the two year and then it reversing hard to the downside because the Fed basically follows the two year. So if you get if you get that kind of setup, that that's gonna, you know, that th that's where and and that's accompanied by stock market weakness, which it should be because that's usually how it happens. You know, the stock market sells off, it it uh, you know it makes a lower low. It's just really weak, so money moves into bonds at that point. And anticipates, you know, the Fed stopping, the Fed having to cut eventually. That's when you'll see the divergence in uh, gold, especially versus the stock market. Because if you you have to look at history, and if you look at you know, these significant bear markets over the last 50, 60 years or so, gold or gold stocks they typically bottom around the time you know, the Fed shifts its policy. Whereas if you're looking at when does the stock market bottom, it's I mean it's Roughly speaking, it's like six months after that. It can be four months or eight months or seven months, something like that. It depends on each cycle. And so when the when the Fed shifts policy and they have to cut rates, um, that's you know that's going to be the time when you see a real significant divergence between gold and the stock market. You know, 
you could get a relief rally in the stock market when they shift policy, but the Fed is shifting pol you know, the weakness in the stock market, the economy being in a reset recession. That's what forces them to shift their policy and eventually cut rates. So that's that's how you you know that's how and when you get the divergence. If the Fed is able, you know, if we're if if they're able to hike rates to you know let's just say four and a half percent in its you know, nine or, or 12 months from now. And, and, you know, there's a, only like a, a minor, you know, it's like a shallow recession with like a soft landing. I mean, in that scenario, you're not going to see a real divergence, you know, gold would get hit really hard and same with silver, which I, I don't think that's going to happen. So, it, but I, last thing I'll say is, you know, when we get the peak, or, or when we get yeah when we get the peak in yields and money starts flowing into the bond market yeah you could see some selling in in uh, gold along with the stock market but eventually they are there is going to be a shift and a divergence there. All right, Jordan. Thank you as always for your comments. Unfortunately, some lower levels that we probably have to look for in the precious metals, but it seems like all markets are looking a bit lower these days as that most recent rally has petered out and. Everyone's, I think, accepting again that the Fed is going to keep on hiking through the rest of this year. Jordan, thank you as always for your time. We'll chat next week. I hope you have a great rest of your week.